Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome back to another edition of Ten Count. I'm Steve Fall, but on today's edition, I'm talking to the reigning and defending 24-7 champion, Dana Brooke. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Steve. Of course. I I have the women's championship right here as well, not the uh, the butterfly title that seems to affect everyone's feelings, either good or bad. What are your feelings <laughs> on that? Women's championship or divas championship? You know... We're always, we're divas on the inside, but women on the outside, right? So I have to represent the women's title. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. And it's funny because quick story, if you go back about like nine months ago, when I started this project, NBC's Town Count, you were my first interview. So if that one went to crap, this would never would have continued on. So thank you for being a very good first guest. And now here we are talking one more time. We're talking about Crown Jewel, though. November 5th on Peacock. I'm pumped. You're pumped. We're all pumped, but you're currently not on the card. If you could be on the card, who would you like to take on? I would absolutely love to take on Dakota Kai and uh, EO. I feel as though, you know, they came in here hot. Um, you know, they kind of looked down upon me. They were kind of, you know, talking crap about me. I would love to go out there, find a tag team partner and go after those tag team titles. Yeah, you got two shoulders, right? Yeah, right. Belt on one, belt on another. Makes sense, right? But also, speaking of two titles, Roman Reigns is defending both his gold against Logan Paul at Crown Jewel. Now, who's going to win? Now, there's Vegas odds are all over the place right now about this matchup because Logan Paul could hit that one punch, knock out Roman, pin him. But what do you think? You know, Roman has the experience, but, you know, I think Logan Paul's hungry. And I've seen some of the training videos. I've seen him come leaps and bounds from when he first started. Obviously, he has that ba uh, boxing background as yeah. well, too. You know, may the best one win. I do. I, I do like Logan Paul, though. I do like Logan Paul. He's hungry. He's a kid. He's going after what he loves. He has nothing to lose here, right? Yeah. So let's go, Logan Paul. True, true, true. And currently right now on these Crown Jewel pay-per-views, the women have not main evented yet. Uh, obviously, progression, things have changed throughout time. But right now, no main event for Crown Jewel. Do you think the women will ever main event Crown Jewel? Definitely. The momentum is high. You know, we're we're breaking ground. We're breaking barriers. We're making history. Every time we go over there, you know, last last time we were on billboards, that was yeah. a huge accomplice, uh, accomplishment. Um, you know, I think it's definitely, definitely something that will happen soon. Now, let's talk about something that happened recently to you. And recently on Raw, Seth Rollins was on commentary during a match with Theory, and he brought up, he said, Theory has a better chance cashing in on Dana Brooke. And obviously you took that as an insult because then you went on Twitter and you uh, you commented, and this is your direct quote, uh, talk is cheap. I work my beep off every single day and will not tolerate this beep anymore. I can promise you I'm the hardest working woman around. Never have I taken off work, always work through injuries, prove multiple times I can fit any position given and do it with a smile. Now, I agree with oh. all that. So – what made you respond to that? Because obviously you could have just brushed that off and moved on, but you felt that that was a direct hit at you. Of course. You know, I've taken it many times. Um, Sam Roberts, Corey Graves, now Seth Rollins. Um, they don't see what I do behind scenes, right? I, I've just, it's, it's always about an opportunity and I'm waiting on that opportunity, you know, to come out there and show them what I can do. But behind the scenes, I'm working 24 seven. I'm in the ring here. I'm working out at the gym. I do boxing classes. I work on promo skills, acting classes, everything. I'm doing it all. And again, never missed a day of work ever. I've had deaths in the family. Um, you know, I've showed up to work that following week just because I want that opportunity. I really do. People, you know, they always see what is showcased out there in the ring or what's on TV, but they never see how someone is working behind the scenes. And I promise you, I'm the hardest working woman. And, you know, I said talk is cheap because I have that aggression. I have that pent up you know, anger inside that I'm just ready to let out and show the world that I can do it. Trust me, I can do it. I'm just as good and as equal as every other woman on the roster. And at the end of the day, it's my time will come. You bring up a good point. People don't see what happens behind the cameras. And I think that's a, a bit of a problem because 
as a performer, you have a boss, you have a manager. You can't just suddenly like show up on TV and like do whatever you want. You're told what to do, when to do it. Obviously, you wait for that opportunity, but has waiting been a problem? Because is there a, a maybe a switch that the Dana Brooke character needs to flip to show everyone what you are doing behind the cameras? Right. I would absolutely love that. Um, and again, too, you know, I've been given the role of being a protege. I've been given the role as a statistician. I've been, you know, on the side of Mandy Rose. I've been a singles competitor. I've done it all. I've done it all. And I can tell you no other woman has done everything as well as I have. And I've done it with a smile, no complaints, no, you know, no going in saying, I don't like, I don't want to do this. I've always done it. And yeah, I definitely want to be able to showcase it and, you know, showcasing it. I've been on main event each and every week that you can see on Hulu and I'm definitely kicking butt on that show as well too. Um, so people don't see that. Right. right. So I'm always working. If they just put, paid close attention, they would see that they would see the progression. And yes, I take, you know, um, hate is my motivation. I take it and I, I go and I'm like, okay, you don't think I could do this? I'm going to go and show you I can do it. And I do, but people just don't take the time to look or research to see what I have been doing. Right. Um, they just want to see it right in front of their face. Um, so yeah, definitely just, I'm waiting for that opportunity. I, you know. But do you I think that say, helped or hurt you? Because being able to do anything at any point, anyone, you know, you've been a doctor, you know, Titus Worldwide, Charlotte Flair's yes. protege, you've done everything they asked you to do, has that maybe hurt you versus versus being like a little pushback? You know, but my career, it's longevity, right? So yep. maybe if I would have said no, maybe if I would have said I don't want to do this, I wouldn't have been here. <laughs> you wouldn't be sitting here talking to me with your 24-7 championship right. around, around your shoulder I right now. I definitely feel like long, longevity is key in this business. Yep. Um, I feel as though I, I've been here for so long for some reason doing you know community work going out and and talking with kids and showing them that just wait for the opportunity and be patient patience is a virtue and look I I'm the example of it and I'm still here I'm still working I still have a great job I work for the best company in the world right. um, and it's a blessing so yeah I know I I fired off quick but it's like hey listen you of know course. don't treat me like an underdog all the time. Right. That's, I think that's a problem too. It feels like everyone sometimes treats you like you showed up yesterday, but it wasn't yesterday. Right. It's been years. Right. Yeah. You know, exactly. and, uh, you know, that, that's what, so have you talked to Seth Rollins at all about those? Comments? No, I have not. It was funny. Cause, um, we, we were talking backstage before all this happened. I had a match on main event and everything was great. You know, you did awesome. I like this. I like that. Everything like that, like compliments. And then I'm like, that night I'm scrolling on Twitter. I'm like, wait a second here. We mm. were just talking. Right. And again, maybe, you know, Seth and I are, are good friends. I absolutely love Becky as well, too. Maybe he didn't mean it in the way that I took it, but mm. it was just that time and place, too, because it was a couple months ago, as I said, Corey Graves. Before that, you know, Sam Roberts. So it was just like, you know, and, and maybe the way that the source quoted it, too, you know, maybe <laughs> pop oh, the thing. internet will always get you, won't it? Uh, yes. It does think you mentioned kids, though. And I, I do want to change the topic for a second because there's this wrestling club, Kip Amp Middle School. It's a wrestling club, sixth grade, seventh graders. They love wrestling. And I mentioned to the teacher, Victor Perry, I'll be talking to you. So they had a question. Aww, for you. So of let's course. And, you know, this one is, uh, I think, maybe a, a simple answer, but we don't know. We'll find out. So they want to know. They're currently studying uh, key moves that help a wrestler identify to the audience. So they want to know, what is your favorite move? Mine is my round off back elbow in the corner. It shows that I, you know, I'm agile. It shows my background, which is gymnastics. It shows power from my fitness um, uh, background as well, too. I find it very signature to me and it's effective. It's some, you know, it's very effective. Um, I try and do it all the time to make people know, okay, that's Dana Brooke. Right. You know, if anybody that has um, worked in the industry and is an up and coming wrestler, I see it on Instagram. People always tag me in their little round off back elbow videos. And I 
find that like super special to me because I'm like, wow, I'm actually rubbing off on them. They want to try <laughs> something that, you know, I've done. And they always say, you know, the Dana Brooke uh, run up back elbow. And I find that very, very amazing that I can go out there and, and inspire people to try something. Outstanding. Uh, I, I bet those kids are really going to enjoy the fact that you answered their question, because if I was a little kid and a WWE superstar answered one of my questions, I would be, you know, what? go crazy <laughs> so that's pretty awesome uh thank you for doing that as well uh, though i think a lot of people want it and are waiting for it evolution the pay-per-view will we ever get evolution number two all women's pay-per-view i definitely do believe so that's in the near future it might not be evolution but it might be something like it mm -hmm. um you know with Triple H has always believed in women. He's always had the women's back. He's always been promoting and pu pushing women. And with Stephanie now too being involved more, um, she's always for women empowerment. Always, always, always. So I definitely think that's something that we can look forward to and we're definitely pushing. Um, you know, women have always, for the last decade or so, have been pushing the bar and really stepping up and, and um, you know, in those crown jewel pay-per-views, we've been making history. So I definitely feel as though it's it's something that we will see again soon. Oh, man, I can't wait. Uh, speaking of pay-per-view, Survivor Series is coming back to Boston with War Games. November 26th on Peacock. Triple H announced this. I am so excited. Now, let's talk about some fantasy. Because if you had a Survivor Series team, we'll call, the, I, I don't know what you'd call your name, the, the Brookamaniacs, and they would... You're allowed to have three members on your team, past, present, or future women wrestlers on your team. Ooh. Who would be on your fantasy team? Three people. Beth Phoenix, Bianca Belair, Ooh. and Stephanie McMahon. Oh, she just slapped everyone down. Yeah, and she's a boss, babe. You know, she she means business. She'll do whatever it takes. Oh my! Dirty, fair, whatever it takes. Uh, Beth has the strength of a monster. She's super strong. Um, she has the exper uh, experience. Yep. She's been up against the best of the best. And you know, Bianca Belair, she's the women's champion currently, so she knows what it takes. You know, and and she's worked with the women currently, so she definitely, definitely has that ability um, to pull for a victory. Man, that'd be crazy. Uh, though recently on NXT, uh, The Rock's daughter, uh, Ava Rain is her wrestler's name in NXT, and she made her debut. And of course, the internet likes to do what they do, and they're critiquing, oh, why isn't you called the, you know, the, the Rock's daughter? It's like, well, wouldn't you want to make your own name for yourself? Like, how do you feel about that? Exactly. I, I definitely feel, uh, you know, we have our own path in life and we shouldn't follow in someone else's footsteps. It's the same thing as Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair wanted to be her own. She wanted to come out and, and showcase that she's not Ric Flair's daughter. She's Charlotte Flair. Mm -hmm. Same thing with her. You know, um, I actually knew her before she, she came into wrestling and she was the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest thing. And she always just wanted to wrestle. And yes, it's great to have the advantage of being the rock star daughter, but I could feel that hunger that she just wanted to do something and do it on her own. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, she was involved in the business always. And that, you know, growing up in it definitely maybe encouraged her to get into wrestling. But I feel like she needs to create her own path and just not follow in her father's footsteps. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, I don't know if people remember when The Rock showed up in 1996 as Rocky Maivia. It wasn't like everyone was like, come on, give me a hug. There was a lot of angry chants before he joined the Nation of Domination and started using catchphrases and getting over with everybody. So we'll have to see how that goes on. But right now, so many people are coming back to the WWE. Hit Row, we had Bray Wyatt return, Karen Cross, Scarlet, Damage Control. Who do you want to see come back to the WWE? Because I know there's a lot of names on the tip of my tongue, but what about you? Um, honestly, I would I would love to see Emma come back. Um, yes. I feel as though Emma and I have had amazing history together down in NXT, up on the main roster, and with those tag team tag team titles back in the picture. Uh, they weren't in the picture when we were teaming together. So I definitely would, you know, like to see and pick up where we left off and maybe go for those tag team titles. I 100%. I wrote that name down, hoping you'd say really? that name. Oh, yeah. 
Because that combo of you and Emma together was outstanding. It was like this brand new breath of fresh air, it felt like. And then suddenly things, you know, things happen. You know, I don't work there. And things happen. And and I was like, oh, that pairing. Because she got injured. And then that kind of ruined the momentum. Then you became Charlotte Flair's, like, protege. It was, yeah, you know, uh, God, I hope Emma comes back and joins you. That'd be so outstanding. And she's great. You know, as far as if she goes off on her own and does her thing, too, I feel as though she'll kill it as well. Um, you know, but never say never. We might, you know, end up on the same, same sign, same team and go after those tag titles. God, I hope so. Uh, speaking of titles, you have the 24 seven championship, but currently there is no like second, I don't know, I would call it secondary, but like you have the world championship, you have IC, you have US for men. Do you believe that the women need, you know, if you have the world championships and the Raw and SmackDown, do you think they need like an intercontinental title for women? You know, what's crazy is you took the thought out of my head. I've actually been wanting to transition the 24-7 title into an IC title. I think it would be amazing. We, we're building the roster. We have amazing women on the roster with everyone coming back. Why not? You know, and I know we have the tag team titles, but, you know, not everyone is teamed up. And, and you know, you, you have the storylines that are going for the women's uh, title, but, you know, then the, the rest are just like little stories within the mix. So why not go for uh, an IC title? And this way, too, it's not secondary, but it's just another thing to to pour your heart and soul in and have that title and and be given that opportunity. And, um, you know, I just feel like enhance the women's division. I agree. I agree 100%. Uh, let's transform that 24-7 championship because it's been missing from Raw and SmackDown lately, and I would like to see it back on Raw and SmackDown represented as, a, as another championship for the women. I would love that so much, but I am told I got to wrap this baby up. So, Dana Brooke, again, thank you so much for being such a thank great, you. great guest the first time back in uh, March. Yeah. And that shot me off in this platform, allowing me to talk to more professional wrestlers like yourself, and I really thank you so much for Look being here. Look at how far we've come. <laughs> but you still got the title, too. You had the title then. You have the title now. I love it so much. Yes. 